<laughs> and with that, uh, welcome everybody to today's uh, CubeVert community meeting. It is the 26th of July, which seems totally insane, but here we are. Um, oh. Uh, if you could please put down your name in the attendees uh, list at the top there. Um, as I said, I've put the agenda into chat and um, yeah, we'll, we'll get going. Um, do we have any new members this week or people that have maybe lurked before in this meeting and haven't introduced themselves and would like to take that opportunity now? All righty. Um, next on the list is, oh yeah. And uh, yeah, if you've got anything we'd like to talk about, anything you'd like to highlight uh, or any questions you'd like to ask, we've got the agenda and the open floor. Um, Gunny's are the one. Um, and likewise, pull requests and bugs. Um, jump them in there, we will get to them. First up, we have the schedule check-in. Uh, click on this. What have we got? What I say that it was? So this must be this week. So we're starting the 1.28 provider, which I saw an email about. Thank you, Brian. Um, oh, and next week, and was that three weeks' time? We'll have the Kubernetes release. All things going well. All righty. Um, another thing, I'm just going to jump ahead a little bit because um, this is another kind of a check-in. Um, we've got some um, CVFPs uh, which are open and some of them close really soon. We've got four KCDs, which are Kubernetes uh, community days. They're um, quite small city-centric regional events. Um, I've never been to one, but I hear they're a lot of fun. We've got Austria, Sri Lanka, Texas, and Denmark. And we've also got the Open Source Summit in Japan, which has just opened up. Um, and you can see the, the submission dates there and all the links there if anyone's interested. If anyone's going to Flock, um, Brian is giving a talk there. Um, so if you're going to be there, go check it out. Um, that's in, when is that? Next week? August 2nd to the 4th. Close that out. All right, I saw, so um, it's kind of like a mailing list thing. Is is Lee on the call at all? Fair enough. Um, he sent an email, I think it was the end of last week, asking about the um, uh, populating the, the SIGs that we created. Um, um, basically, it is a, a mechanism so that we have kind of component and, and SIG specific reviewers and approvers. So that was a change that was made, but we now, um, as Lee quite rightly points out, need to populate those. Um, and so he's created a thread, which you can read over here. And he's created a meeting uh, next week, which I'll just click on here because I can't remember which day it is. Also Thursday. Um, at, what, what is that? BST. Um, oh, UK time. So that would be 12 o'clock uh, UTC. I think. Uh, so just wanted to raise awareness of that. Um, we now have at least two bots attending the meeting. Can the host kick ban them out? Um, who's the second bot? We could try. I did try and the um the one from was it read AI. I did try and um uh deny list that domain, but it doesn't seem to have worked at all. Mm -hmm. Um I think the Kubert user is the host. Not sure, something I will um, endeavor to find out. 
before. Um, why don't we move to the open floor and I can see if I can figure out how to uh, dump people. Uh, Joao, are you here? Yeah. So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, so basically I wanted to raise a discussion about the uh, recent alert that uh, I'm I opened up PR to add to QVIRT and it's related to some uh, CRC errors that you are finding on the cluster nodes when uh, the the users are basically creating virtual machines using a walk volume uh, for the safe provisioner that is not using Rx bounds. So, and uh, Igor is also present in the call. He raised the, the question if uh, we should actually um, add this opinionated alert, right? Because uh, this is very specific to a storage provisioner. So his concern is that uh, maybe on QVIRT, we should not uh, raise this alert about this specific provisioner that we have no control of. Um, my idea is that um, if uh, we are aware of the problem and we can do something to at least raise awareness for the users that this problem exists, it might cause them issues with their VMs and even severely degraded performance with a cluster, we should uh, alert them, even if it really doesn't uh, totally fit uh, uh, what uh, QVIRT is supposed to do. So I wanted to know your opinion about this topic and uh, if this would be a good addition or not. And Igor, if you want to add your opinion or any detail that I might have missed, please go ahead. Maybe not. So I don't know if anyone has like a, an opinion on this. Yeah, sorry for the delay. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Great. So um, yeah, I would like to share my kind of concern regarding this. Um, the alert we are speaking about uh, related to a um, specific storage provision, okay? Let's say it's a specific CSI, among other CSIs, uh, right, that we uh, theoretically support. Now, um, we don't, now, the, there is a code overhead introduced here in order to, um, to implement this current alert. To be more specific, we need to add a persistent volume uh, um, shared indexer into the build controller just for the sake of um watching the virtual machines and those who have this specific data uh, persistent volume claim with the self provisioner CFC self provisioner and we have some incorrect attributes inside uh, the physical uh, the persistent volume only then there is a risk for uh, the CRC uh, for the IO CRC errors now um uh, from my perspective, well, th th this is fine to have, for example, alerts that are related to operator observability, okay, for, for operator health, for, for control plane, and some common alerts related to workloads in QBuild that can indicate some state, some information about the virtual machine. But this is, but this looks to me as a corner case. And I'm also, I'm, I feel that we don't have a quorum regarding whether we would accept this uh, alert into our code or not. So I would, yeah. and you know, I would like that... to hear some opinion of others, other open source projects, let's say, let's say for example, for each CD, okay? When it's each CD, for example, it doesn't, let's, I don't know, imagine a theoretical scenario where each CD, operate, each CD doesn't play nice uh, on some uh, providers, okay? So should we, should will each CD accept an uh, opinionated alert regarding a use case where each CD runs on top of specific provider and, or whether that alert should be outside of each CD core uh, repo and to have, I don't know, some other repos related to observability. Yeah, so 
that was my concern. But does it make sense? I mean, did you did you get uh, my, my point? Uh, yeah, and uh, I wanted to add that uh, maybe we are looking also at this uh, new metric and the overhead as just for the alert. But I actually personally think that this actually might be useful, for example, because uh, after this addition, we'll also still uh, have information about um, which volumes uh, previous VMs were using. So you can have more uh, uh, historical and statistical information about the volumes that VMs were using. So that might also be uh, useful for users in some other contexts. So that actually might be also uh, pointing in favor of uh, this addition. But yeah, I understand your concerns. And as I said in the beginning, it's not really related to core QVIRT functionality. But then again, I think this is important for users. This has been a serious issue for many of them. And although it's a corner case, uh, maybe it makes sense to, to try to prevent them from facing these uh, sort of serious problems. So I agree that it's a corner case and I don't think it should really be in Cooper core, to be honest. Yeah, I agree with that, Xander. And, and yeah, this whole, um, yeah, we're, we're designing um, a way to avoid these CRT errors in the first place. I, yeah, I mean, I definitely agree that it would be nice to report them, but I don't think this is Cube Core is the place to do it. But um, right now, what would be the alternative left to users unworn? Because any any other option, and we thought about maybe, for example, add this to CDI, right? But the the question would be the same. CDI is for, for example, data volumes. It's not really makes it doesn't really make sense to add it there. So we don't have like a good place to add this, and. Um, after so some CDI thinking, does have to... some like storage prov provisioner specific knowledge, so it's better, but I agree that it's not great. Um, yeah, and as you said, for... this would be in the end a bit temporary, right? After uh, we got this fix, maybe we can remove this alert and this overhead, but yeah, in the meantime, it's not the best solution, I agree, but uh, uh, it's somewhat what we have, right? Yeah, I, I don't really have a better place to put this. It, it just Cooper Core does not seem like the right place, in my opinion. But... I mean, I think CDI is better, but it's still uh, not ideal. Um, but uh, I, I think it is better. <laughs> Okay, I think for me, you can like investigate at least uh, what it will take to do it on CDI and then maybe revisit. Yeah, uh, yeah. so I think we can also take it to the mailing list and also to discuss it in, uh, offline in more details. But uh, mm -hmm. thank you for your opinion. Cool, thank you. Uh, Howard. Hi, Andrew. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Can you hear me? Sorry, yeah, I, I, I nodded and then realized that uh, you probably can't see me. Um, hey, how's it going? Welcome. Yeah, good. Thanks. How's, how are you? I'm very well. Uh, you've got the next point, if you'd like to take it from here. Uh, yes. OK. Uh, OK. Uh, would you mind oh, uh, open the link for a link? Uh, yes. Uh, here is a problem when we when I trying to build the Fedora with test tooling image in the process system, I got the following uh, error message. Uh, uh, in case maybe someone don't know why we do this. Um, uh, 
because Fedora with uh, test tooling image is used by some ETUE tests. Uh, so we try to build multi-arc Fedora with test tooling image to uh, enable more ETUE tests on ARM64 platform. And uh, uh, we have written a script for it. And uh, in this script, we use vert install to uh, install some RPM package in the uh, virtual machine. And then we use vert syspre to uh, generate a Q call to uh, image. And uh, uh, when it run vert syspre, it got the following error. Uh, it shows uh, it unable to mount a BTRFS uh, file system uh, volume. Uh, after some investigation, I found um, the uh, host kernel uh, maybe lack of uh, supporting or, uh, on the uh, BT, uh, BTRFS fail system. Yeah, hey Howard, how are you doing? Uh, Brian here. Um, I was looking at this today and yeah, I'd agree with you, the, the, the worker nodes are missing support for the BTRFS file system, but that's due to the worker, work, worker Workloads cluster being a OpenShift cluster, which basically RHEL and by extension Red Hat Core OS have dropped support for BTRFS. So I am not sure what direction we can take with this. Um, we've kind of struggled to keep up to date with these these test VM images as well. So I believe this is based the test tooling one is based on Fedora thirty five, which is a long time out of date and the one the real time one is based off of fedora 32 so um yeah I, I i'm not sure what the way forward for this would be I, either i can provision these locally from my machine here and get them uploaded to quay and then have them there or we may have to look at moving these v, vm images to maybe a centos stream uh, option where yeah. we wouldn't have to update them as regularly. And I believe there wouldn't be a requirement for BTRFS there either. Oh, sorry, I lost connections. I just relinked to the to the Zoom. Would you mind to uh, answer it again? Um, yeah, so basically the, the workload cluster is an operative cluster and it doesn't have BTRFS support. So the nodes don't have BTRFS support at all. Um, and yes. I don't think we can easily add that there um, from what I saw today. Um, it wouldn't be a simple thing to fix. Um, so I, I can see two paths forward since we've kind of struggled to maintain the version, the Fedora versions in these VMs, either move to kind of a CentOS stream VM with test tooling, or basically it would come down to someone on the infra team like myself or Daniel building these images locally and and publishing them to Quay. So I should be able to run the automation and I should be able to build it here locally and be able to publish the image to Quay. But from the workload cluster, we're unable to do that because we do not have the BTRFS support there. Okay, so you, you can build it in your local system and upload it to the uh, repository? Right. Yeah, that 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 is one route. Yeah, but as you, as you, as you see here as well, that's based off of Fedora thirty five, which is already I think three versions back, with Fedora thirty nine around the corner. So, we might have to talk about moving to CentOS Stream testing VM at some stage. But for now, I can talk with you offline, and we can get these published, and we can move on from here. Then from that, but we might have to remove the pro jobs that have been put in place because they won't work on the workloads cluster. Okay, thanks. Thanks very much, Brad. Yeah, thanks, Howard. Are there other benefits to having a CentOS stream uh, VM for this kind of stuff? Yes. It, it would just, yeah, it would just be this, we wouldn't have to, the update cycle wouldn't be as strenuous. So basically it wouldn't be every, I think it's six months for Fedora. Um, but like the real time, the real time VM is back on Fedora 32. So 
they haven't been updated in quite a while. So, um, yeah, it's just might be better for just if we go to Center Stream Nine, then we don't have to update for quite a while. Okay. It sounds like I need to upgrade my version of Fedora. I think I'm on 35. Um, thank you, Howard. Alexander, you've got the next one up there. Yes, just quick announcement. I released uh, the host path provision there, 017. Um, it supports x86, ARM64, and PowerPC now. Um, and you can get those from Quay and all the, the operator and the deployment YAMLs are provided, so. Woo! And it, it should also support uh, Kubernetes 127, so. Very That's cool, it. well done. Ed. Eddie, Edward H. I see your name. Are you still there? Are you able to speak to your concrete example of the Bridge Network binding? Yes, sorry. There we go. Um, yes, I just wanted to, to update. Uh, there was a little bit of progress in this uh, area. And the one that is uh, is looking for feedback is uh, there is a concrete example of how to do a, a network binding using a plugin, at least in theory, I will say, um, with a concrete example of what needs to be done and what happened at each stage. Um, and if, if you want to look at it, maybe you'll see something that you think is missing, uh, you can, can dig in. And there is another one that is going to be finished, I, I hope, tomorrow, uh, which is about Slurp, something that no one uses. But uh, it is a good example of uh, something that is a bit different. Um, that's it. Probably we'll add more examples for each binding and. Uh, to complete the, and then it will be from an example to a concrete, uh, to something that this is what we want to do eventually. Feel free to feedback. Thank you. Very cool. Um, yeah, so if people can have a look through that, if it interests you and provide feedback on that document. Uh, oh, and I, I, sorry, I was also asked offline about, I promised that there will be a, a, be a weekly meeting about this uh, subject. So I think I will start it from next week. I will I will try to send a, an invite this until, until tomorrow and we'll start it from next week. Nice Thanks. one. I did, I did see on that thread, um, someone, I can't remember who it was, uh, did ask what the outcome of the previous meeting was. Um, have you touched base with them uh, outside of that thread? Yes, I, I will answer. Uh, if I missed thread, I will try to find them and, and answer it, and I will also send the invite. Nice one. So, yeah, if you if you are interested in that, uh, look out for Eddie's invite for what sounds like next week. All right, we've got a PR that needs some attention from Piotr. Oh, yeah. Uh, hi. So it's a pretty small PR. I it's already reviewed and uh, I'll get them. Is there? I just need an approval. It's for exposing a metrics from Libgrid. This is the only one which is missing, I think. And yeah, uh, we would definitely. Uh, it would be beneficial for us to have it. Uh, if you can see, I think I'm looking for approval like for a week. Yeah. So if anyone can spend like five minutes on it, it's really, really simple and a short one. Yeah. 
with having a look through who's in this meeting. Uh, yeah, do you have approval rights? The best person for approval, and usually I turn to him to my monitoring PRs on Kivir. Kivir is Igor, he's still here, but maybe you can take a look. Okay. Yeah, I uh, sorry, I will uh, see myself on uh, on that one. Thank you very much. Sure, with pleasure. Alrighty, we've got two design proposals. I'll just kind of bring these up. You can read them in your own time. I just wanted to yeah, throw some light on them. One is from Lee about uh, common instance types. And the other one is also about log collecting. Ah, this is from Simone from QVAC Components. Um, yep, and so those are there, follow the links, have a look at them, provide feedback. All that good stuff. This one is, well, I don't know if you saw Miguel's uh, email and blog post um, celebrating they can now write network policies for secondary network interfaces. So there's a blog post down here um, and there's also some docs these included. This was posted this week. Um, yeah. So that's interesting. There's a, it's a big read, but it's mostly configs. Um, thank you very much for that, Miguel. Uh, as we saw earlier, we've got um, 1.28 provider is now available. Again, this is the highlight. Um, thank you, Brian. And a good conversation that's happening about that Daniel raised. I think Daniel's on holiday at the moment, um, or at least out of office. Um, about what could have been a unit test rather than end-to-end -end test. Um, yeah, if you haven't seen this, I highly recommend reading through the opinions that have already been given. Um, and if you have anything to add, uh, please do. I think this is a really important part of, of this project. Um, the, the CI load and, and what we can do with, um, uh, what is it? writing better tests and scrapping all the tests when they come non-functional non and uh, yeah, looking after the resources that we'll rely upon when it comes to testing. Um, so please have a read of that. And we have, um, someone just sneaked this in, a new design proposal. Yes, uh, Shelly just posted this to the Cupid mailing list. Uh, oh. Essentially integrating with volume populators uh, in the VM template. So, I'm sorry, in the VM definition instead of like data volume templates. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, that looks great. I, it's nice to see all these design proposals come through with lots of um, like wordy detail. Um, one bug to look at, as far as I could tell, if you do have a bug that um, you would like attention on, please add it here. Otherwise, we've got this one that was raised by Vasily, I think today. Um, and he was hoping to get a second brain to have a look at it. Um, so I think this falls under SIG storage. Um, I think the Lichi is probably the best one to look at this and she implemented it, but she's on uh, vacation right now, I believe. So. Uh, okay, okay. She's also CC. All right. Well, if anyone else is interested, just to have a little look, um, uh, there it is at the bottom of the page. And that brings us to the end of our current agenda. Let me just check to see that nothing's been added. And we did get rid of those two bots. Uh, thank you to whoever slipped into the CNCF Qbert account and dumped them. Wonderful. All no right. Who was that? That's Stu. 
I unclipped. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't log back into my normal account because I, I don't have a leave button. I have an end meeting button and I figured that would be disruptive. So. Oh, snap. All right. Well, yeah, thanks for doing that. And um, yeah, I'll have to look into a more uh, long term solution to that because I suspect next week the same thing is going to happen. And look, yeah, there was no ban button, just a kick button. So they'll be just back. a kick button. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what I found about those things is because we have a public meeting that has no like um, what are they called waiting rooms or anything like that um basically anyone that has that enabled on their side that says that they want to join this meeting that bot automatically joins those meetings um seems to be a yeah a potentially growing headache for the future but um yeah if uh, does anyone have anything at the last minute that'd like to to raise any kudos they'd like to throw around or anything they'd like to just pop in before we all take off Maybe just a quick note on banning. I believe it's in the web interface that that is handled, but I could be misinformed about that. Oh, okay. That's good to know. I had, I had a look around and I couldn't see anything because it doesn't actually list who's in our meetings. We just get the recording and some, like we don't get a lot of analytics from it, but I will, I'll take another look. Yeah. Maybe, let's uh, maybe sync up uh, offline. Sounds good. Thank you. without any further ado thank you very much everyone for attending and contributing to this community meeting have a lovely rest of the day and have a lovely weekend and we'll see you next week thank, thank you. you bye thank you bye bye, bye. bye. thank you bye